All right, everyone, uh, DIYers, professionals, uh, anybody who's into detailing or paint correction, I think it's time. I think it's time to make the transition. Uh, I've made the transition fully. Uh, I have basically every polisher outside of the, you know, the knockoffs. Um, I think it's time to make the move to cordless completely. Uh, there is one here that I didn't pull out that we'll talk about as well. It's the, the PX, PXE80, so we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, unfortunately, there isn't one company and there isn't one battery. In fact, there's a different battery for all four of these, uh, so that is a disadvantage. So you would be essentially early adopting at this point, but I, 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 I find it very unlikely that one company, you know, maybe Rupes could pull it off, but that one company is gonna have the best version of each of these sizes for when you're polishing. Uh, but there is such a huge advantage, especially if you have a nice garage and you like to blow out pads, you should be blowing out your pads. Uh, so to walk across the garage and have to unplug every time is super, super annoying. Uh, and so, and then having to deal with the cord and you have cords all over the floor, especially you have multiple machines going. Uh, it's just, it's time. It's time to make the transition. The battery tech is good enough. The uh, torque and capability of these is good enough. I did a really sophisticated correction on my E36 sitting here and uh, used nothing but these three machines on the whole thing. Um, I take that back. I, in, in the front clip of the car, I did some, some A-B testing, some back and forth. Uh, where I've made myself use the LHR 15 Mark III, which is the industry standard. This is the industry paint correction standard. Some of you like the 21, I like the 15 millimeters with a five inch backing plate, the balance is better. Taking and putting a smaller, putting this backing plate on a 21 kind of throws off the balance a bit. Not my ideal uh, machine, but this is, the, this is the standard. You have power cord, plug it in, super ergonomic. Um, it, uh, you know, it's tons of torque, tons of capability. Um, I feel like the, the Mark III series doesn't need the washer mod, so you notice I don't have a washer mod on mine, uh, but this tool is extremely capable. It's, the, it's been the standard for, uh, the Mark III was, what, a couple of years old now. Um, it's fantastic, but dealing with the cord uh, has always been kind of annoying. You don't really notice it until you start to use these cordless things. Uh, but I think we're there and I think you could, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about this, my advice would be to make the transition. So let's talk about the tools and we'll talk about the costs and we'll talk about my recommendations on these and how, how I would approach it. So Milwaukee, I think, is the best cordless um, um, 15 millimeter or 21 millimeter machine. This machine is, I would say, 90% as balanced as this machine. Has equal, if not possibly more torque than this machine. Uh, doesn't have the pad stalling that this machine has. Uh, this is free spinning. There's no need for any kind of washer modification or anything. Uh, this one here will spin freely where the Rupes, even mine that's very worn in, doesn't spin freely. Um, this has, for the first time, and I don't know how they pulled this off, but you know, Milwaukee got it 90% right, right out of the box from a company that doesn't know jack about doing this kind of stuff. In fact, I spent about an hour and a half with them, uh, plus talked to them quite a bit about, you know, in the development phase, recommended some of my friends get these machines and help provide feedback and testing. Uh, but this particular machine here is really well balanced. You do get more feedback through your hand than you do the Rupes, which does add up over time. But I found myself, and I have 30 plus hours into this car. Um, I'm probably about 30 hours of polishing, but um, you know, say 20 hours of polishing. Um, it's, it's really, really, really good. So what happened is I was doing AB. So start on the front clip. I do one section with the Rupes. I had the same pad, same polish, same everything. Then the next section with this, back, forth, back, forth. And subconsciously, I found myself halfway down the car. 
uh, and I wasn't going back and forth anymore. I, was, I intended to go back and forth, uh, but this machine is actually more pleasant sounding. Uh, it doesn't have that kind of shrill, high pitch that I never really noticed in the Rupes as being a problem. Uh, this one is quite a bit more pleasant. Uh, the battery life is insane. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll have no issues with batteries, and I'll, I'll explain my recommendations of what you do here. Um, the machine is about... You know, when you add the battery in, it does have, I would say, we could put it on the scale here, but I'd say it's about a pound and a half more, so it is a little heavier, but I didn't find that to be any uh, a difficult thing. Um, I don't love the black backing plate. It's a little harder to see a mark. I made a red mark. Maybe I'd like to make a white or a yellow mark on, on this to, to help with you know, seeing what's going on with the backing plate. But I'm telling you, this puppy, I run it at 4,400 RPMs, it goes to 5,100, so I'm, you know, two clicks below top speed, which is, you know, pretty much the same. You run the Rupes at speed four, four and a half, at least I do, and it goes to six. So your RPM range, uh, let's see, six is, yeah, I mean, the Rupes caps out at 5,200 RPMs, so yeah, you're running the Rupes somewhere around the same speed, 4,400 RPMs with headroom if you needed it. I use, I use the you know, 5200 RPMs or 5100 RPMs if I'm doing glass or something like that, just trying to clean it up. I'm sure some of you, you know, some of you pros will go full bore and I just don't find that, find that necessary. I find that you end up sort of overworking the, the polish capability and you know, causing problems. So the Milwaukee base tool is 299 bucks pretty freaking awesome. Uh, the tool with batteries is, uh, what did I say it was? It's 530. You want to buy the kit for sure. <clears throat> you get two XE 6.0 batteries, which are the high output batteries. Um, these are the uh, batteries that are, um, will hold, you know, hold quite a bit more capacity. But the key is, especially with a long running tool like this, in order to keep your batteries doing well, you need to keep the heat out of them. Heat kills lithium ion batteries. So heat is the issue. I don't like to run them down to zero as well. I'll run them down to say 20%. So keep it, you know, in a perfect world, your lithium ion battery, you'd run 20 to 80%. Um, I do run, I do charge them to 100, but I uh, use the pretty sophisticated supercharger. Um, but I would suggest for 230 bucks, you buy the kit. The kit comes with a bag and all kinds of crap that you don't really need. It also comes with a charger, which I'd recommend you get a different charger, especially if you're a pro. Uh, but the XC 6.0 batteries are amazing and it is sort of the sweet spot if you were to buy one XC 6.0 battery it's 180 bucks the 6.0 is the sweet spot in the Milwaukee battery line because they have a two-pack that's 280 uh, so you're saving yourself what uh, 80 bucks on on buying a two-pack they also make an 8.0 which would be preferred they don't sell it in a kit with 8.0s. You'd have to buy these a la carte. That's the only way to get the 8.0s. I think the new vacuums have a kit with 8.0s in them, uh, but these 8.0s are 200 bucks a piece and they don't sell a two pack. So uh, it just, I, I don't find, I, I don't notice any difference. I'm sure there is some runtime difference uh, between the 6.0s and the 8.0s. Uh, and the, 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 the way that they set up the balance of the machine, I think that the high output, these bigger batteries with the 21s, 2160s. I gotta figure. I gotta commit this to memory. I'm always confused. There's 18600s and 21700s or something like that. So this has the the uh, the bigger lithium ions in it and uh, the ability to be supercharged as well. I wouldn't run this. I feel like the machine doesn't feel as balanced with the the old tried and true, but it certainly works with them. Um, I would suggest not running the XC 5.0s. But if you want to take some weight out of the machine, you could. Uh, these just won't. These have the, the traditional lithium ion, the smaller batteries, the smaller cells. Uh, so I would highly suggest you buy the tool as a kit. Can't hurt you to get the batteries. It's 230 bucks more. Get the XC 6.0 batteries and, uh, and, and call it a day. And two of them, I'm telling you, if you don't have any Milwaukee tools and you're, you're nervous about battery life and you're a professional detailer, I'm telling you, two XC 6.0 batteries will run you all day, every day, for months on end. Don't run them to zero, run them to you know, one bar, throw it on the, ch on the charger, and just keep cycling. Those two batteries, you can sit here running the polisher over and over and over and over, nonstop, no issues. Now, 
if you are you know charging a lot you've got a lot of other milwaukee tools this rapid charger is kind of cool uh, for this application if you're polishing um, i would spend the money this doesn't come with you could certainly use the charger that comes with the tool comes with the one it's a rapid charger but the supercharger i think that this um this, from what I've been told, is a little bit um, gentler on the batteries. It charges quite a bit faster uh, and is designed specifically for the high output version of Milwaukee batteries. So I would, we have these in the store, I would, um, I would get this. It's model number, what is the model number on this puppy? I got a little thing underneath. It's 48-59-1811. Uh, so I think you want the, uh, the dual supercharger with M18, M12 for this application. Then you have three inch and this is the new guy a couple of flaws i'll point the flaws out to start actually only one flaw it's the trigger the trigger is freaking annoying you'll end up kind of bumping it and shooting polish all over the place i would really really encourage you to get in the habit of turning it to zero otherwise i promise you no matter how careful you are you're going to screw up because you're going to be listening to a podcast you're going to be talking to somebody you're going to put in a couple of drops of polish and then what happens is what happens is that, you know, you're gonna be like doing this, not paying attention, and all it takes is that, and you're getting it on your face, all over the car, all over the walls, everywhere. Uh, so I would urge you to get used to turning it down to zero. So they're really smart on this particular machine. Uh, the batteries are fantastic. The only problem is they don't match up with anything else. Uh, the, the, the speed trigger is right here at your fingertips. The, the, the trigger is also variable speed. This does not like to run without a pad on it. It's really, really set up to run with, I think, a microfiber pad. It does lose a little bit of its balance uh, when, you, uh, when you load up, when you have a loaded up um, foam pad, uh, especially the Rupes pads. It does okay, but you'll start to get quite a bit more feedback. But tons of torque. You won't be wanting for anything else. You're, I run this thing on speed three, uh, and it goes to speed five. So just like the regular Rupes tools, you're running it at like 70%. Um, no reason why you couldn't do an entire car, uh, all the three inch sections, all the smaller areas of fenders and curves and things like that with this puppy. It is absolutely fantastic. The batteries are pretty good too. They charge in about, it seems to be about 20 minutes. Um, these are, this is an 18 volt architecture. Uh, these are two and a half amp hour batteries. So um, I, same thing. I don't find myself because when you're polishing a car, <clears throat> unless you have a whole team that's just passing the polisher from one person to the next, um, you're polishing, wiping, inspecting, adding polish, blowing out pads, polishing, wiping, inspecting, blowing out pads, adding polish. You're not just sitting there running the thing for, for 30 minutes straight. You shouldn't be anyway. Uh, and so the batteries are fine. Just keep one on the charger. Uh, I find that the thing was charged way, way before, if not hours before I needed to change the darn thing. Uh, on all of these particular machines, the battery life is pretty fantastic and the charging is pretty quick. Uh, so this is the big solve because I think this thing sucks as a three inch. I think it's too big as a one inch and I don't like it as a three inch. I know a lot of you love this machine from Flex, super high quality machine, but <clears throat> if I have a choice, I don't use this thing at all. So it was the reason why uh, I actually like the Flex XFE, what is the model on this, XFE 7? Yeah, XFE 7-12. I actually like the Flex three inch corded better than the Rupes three inch corded uh, and I've been using it for a long time. The Rupes here, um, the, the, the indicator or the uh, speed indicators underneath the power cord. I feel like the torque, has, the torque is a little better on the Flex. Um, so I was always using the combination of the Flex XFE 7 and the, the Rupes machine here. While I'm in this drawer here, this is the XFE 15, which is the uh, DA dual action polisher, which would be the competitor to the Milwaukee. This is smoother but almost zero torque and stalls like crazy. So you gotta be really, really flat on that thing. Um, so the Flex in many ways is more elegant than the Milwaukee, but the Milwaukee is a much better competitor uh, to the Rupes LHR. So in the three inch world, this weird neck thing is fantastic. The ergonomics of this is great. Um, I wouldn't be disappointed if, they're, if they do come out with a five inch that looks like this and feels like this, and operates like this. It is really, really fantastic. The charger looks like this. 
comes with the tool. Um, it's 405 bucks if you buy just the tool, which is crazy because it's cheaper than the one inch. Uh, I think it's quite a bit less sophisticated than the one inch. Uh, but this puppy uses, again, you'll use microfiber and foam pads. I use Rupes pads to have here. The new Rupes, um, the new Rupes microfiber is awesome. I'm going to be making the transition to this. We'll, we'll have a video specific with uh, with Todd Helm uh, from Rupes. He's going to come and visit in a few weeks when I get my G80 here, and then I'm using you know the typical yellow pads most often, sometimes white. Uh, using all the different colors of the microfiber pads, primarily yellow and white on the microfiber because the interface is a little bit easier to manage. We'll talk about that in a future video. And then you have the the uh, your trusty uh, LHR. Um, What's the model number of this thing? Yeah, oh, sorry, HR, HR81. Uh, so this is the ML version, the long neck version. Um, this is, uh, I have it set up in, uh, in DA mode. This is where Flex wins out with their tech and how they swap, how you swap from rotary from one inch to two inch, from long throw to short throw uh, for sanding versus polishing. Right now on both of these, you can see how I like to use them. I have the 12 millimeter orbit set up on it. Uh, this tool, um, because of its size and torque and capability, you know, you have to manage it, keep the pad flat, it can stall. Uh, but in the interchange of swapping this out is not nearly as good, but I'm telling you, I didn't, I didn't get this machine out, not one time. After I put this one away, it didn't come back out. Uh, so I spent, you know, 15 or so hours once I put the Rupes away doing these three. And I'm telling you, if you're going to uh, make the transition, these three, and I've used them all to this point, um, they are the three best in each size range. Uh, the long neck is 440 bucks. You can buy it in the sustainer. You, you'll be able to buy this in the sustainer kit, basically a big carrying case um, for 630 bucks. I would not recommend that. Just buy this. Uh, you don't want half the crap that comes in that sustainer kit. You don't need that stupid thing. I end up throwing it away. So they used to make it in a nifty little bag, which was kind of nice, but um, now it's in this plastic thing. <clears throat> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, I threw mine away already. I gave, gave the case for Kate to put her dolls in and threw away all the stuff that was in there. So um, buy this. It comes with a, you know two batteries. Comes with the charger. So I would buy just the kit alone for 440 bucks. So you have 530, 405 for this kit with two, with two batteries. So what are we at? That's uh, 935. Uh, another 400 bucks. Um, so you're at uh, what 1305, 1345. So 1345 bucks. And then I believe the supercharger is another 200. Uh, so you're um, you know you're 15. Let's say 1500 bucks uh, for this setup without pads. And then you need to start buying buying pads. And I think you buy Rupes microfiber and Rupes foam. Uh, and you get if you just buy yellow foam. Uh, and you buy the yellow and white microfiber, you're going to get like almost anything done. Almost anything that you, you, you'd like to get done. The other than two pads I, was at, I would add would be the Rupes wool. Um, I'm just such a huge fan of the Rupes pads. Every year or so, I get a case from my friends at Lake Country. They send me their pads and, you know, I like them, but I'm just telling you the Rupes pads are just better. Um, Buff and Shine as well makes a good pad. Uh, you can't go wrong with them. And then, of course, Meguiar's microfiber pads. The Meguiar's I've been, you know, using as many of us have been using for, you know, a long, long time. Um, I don't know if I've been using these for a decade, but I've been using them for a while. Let's see, I probably started using these. When did I get DA or the D300? Is when I got bought the Meguiar's DA microfiber cutting system. That's how you know. So these are the DCM DMC threes. The mid they have a finishing microfiber pad and an extra cut these are the ones that i've been using these are the mid-grade cutting pads forever now we have to do lake country lake country is the only one that makes a one inch microfiber cutting pad for the uh for the the rupes but uh yeah i think this is we're going to make a make a new probably a new cordless package with these three you know this is maddie's recommended package i'll be making the transition to rupes also adding the rupes polishes as well this stuff is freaking fantastic uh the da course i mean i think i'm gonna
probably punt um, cut max for this. I think this is so much better. It finishes down so much nicer, has I think more cut than cut max, at least it did on this car. I need to use it a bit more. Um, but this with a uh, combination with this and my new favorite pad, which is this puppy, this uh, white microfiber pad from, uh, from Rupes, either white or yellow, depending on how aggressive you're getting. You know, the interface is different. I like this one because it has more contour ability. So it gives me all the contours of foam, but in microfiber with the cut ability of uh, coarse, uh, coarse, uh, DA coarse um, on polish that Jason Rose developed with the, with the Rupes family. So I think, uh, the blue pads are cool too, but again, like I said, we'll get into the pads, but these are so stiff. I find these to be much more enjoyable to use. So that's my uh, current take. I know this isn't a super exciting video, but I know cordless gets uh, talked about a ton. And uh, I'm telling you, 15 millimeter Milwaukee, much more balanced, plenty of torque. Get the kit with two batteries, you'll be good to go. Then you can start to build your Milwaukee architecture if you wanted to. The HLR 75, which is the new um, cordless uh, um, hybrid technology, Bigfoot from, uh, from Rupes. And then the, uh, the HR81 ML for long neck. <clears throat> I have the short neck too. Um, where is the short neck? I got it here somewhere. The short neck is a luxury to have. Um, I usually have mine set up like this, or one or one or the other, where I'll have rotary on the short neck and I'll have DA on the long neck, so I have the two of them ready to go. Um, this starts to get into extreme luxury territory, so I don't, you know, I don't know how many of you are gonna, especially you, you DIY guys, are gonna spend the money to to have both of these. Think long neck is much more versatile. You can get it into tighter areas. In most cases, short neck, if you're trying to do like one hand operation, you're like hanging out over a roof or something like that. Uh, the short neck is uh, much more capable uh, from Jason. This is Jason Rose's take on one handed operation. But gosh, I got a lot of machines, don't I? I have the 21 here somewhere and a 21 of that. And you know, we've got, um, all the flex batteries and flex charges. The flex charger is really cool because it has a digital readout and telling you where you're at. Uh, the other thing that I have coming that um, I'm excited about is they do have a quick connect uh, with that snake thing that they have and then specific pads for like doing uh, underneath door handles and underneath spoilers and inside of like mirrors and stuff like that. So that's another reason why I would, again, I would add this as my fourth tool. Uh, but then you're adding a, a third set, I guess it's a fourth set of battery architecture. So anyway, thanks for watching. Go to obsessgarage.com. We have all this stuff. I really appreciate your support. If you find, uh, find value in these videos uh, and you're going to buy these somewhere, uh, it's super, super helpful. You buy it from us. Uh, the only thing I ask is, you know, Will Rupes is price fixed, but generally we don't discount except for Black Friday, which is coming up. Uh, Black Friday, we do have a big sale. Um, I don't think Rupes is going to allow us to discount. We haven't gotten guidance from them yet. They only did one year. Uh, I think they don't have a lot of supply of machines still, <clears throat> so I don't know that it makes sense for them to run them on sale, but the pads and stuff will be on sale. That's coming up. And uh, yeah, if you're uh, interested in coming to work in here, I need a couple of warehouse workers as well. So uh, hit me up there, Matt at ObsessedGarage.com. If you have questions about this, want to chat with me, pick my brain, this is a major investment. I'd be happy to help you think through it. Uh, I have a lot of fun you know, talking to people about that kind of stuff. So hit me up. You can Matt at ObsessedGarage.com. We'll set up a time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. We'll see you on the next one. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. And getting into this cordless stuff will change the user experience of your polishing, which can be a really monotonous task. Pro or DIY, I think it's time. I think we're ready. So anyway, hit me up. Thanks for watching.